Hi, it's Lel from Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be um, reimagining this dresser and I'm going to give it an old world charm look. I'm going to get Martin to make it sort of shutter doors with chicken wire. I'm going to be painting it pink. I'm going to be putting on wrapping paper on it as decoupage. I'm going to rechange the handles. In fact, stay watching because this is going to be a beauty. So let's talk colours. This is the beautiful colour I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using my usual Guildlane paints. They're an all-in-one paint and look at the colour of this. Isn't it gorgeous? A dusty, sort of dusky rose. It's just such a beautiful colour of pink. I'm going to be applying my, um, my paper over the top of this. I think it's light enough that it should be fine. I'm going to be using a Pan Pilot brush because these are the best for dressers. A bigger print brush you're kind of getting in and out and it's getting in your way. Small, neat brush like this, it'll have it done in jig time. So, um, while Wizard of Oz styly, I'm going to say to Marty, fly my pretty and make me some doors for this. So, I, this had a great big stain here where the varnish had came off of it. So I was just kind of leveling it out like this, but I went a little bit further and I started to look at it and I really love without this nasty varnish, I just like this top. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this outside of the studio, my studio, not Martin's workshop, and I'm just going to I like get my electric sander out, sand the top and do this little edge, and then I'm going to cover it all up because at the end, I think I'll probably just wax it and just keep it nice like that. Okay, so when you see an hour's video, you don't realise actually how long furniture takes to do. What's happened so far is this piece has been sanded on the top. Now, let me just talk about the top. I knew before I sanded it was veneer. Um, the easiest, you shouldn't really sand veneer. That's a big no-no. You should put a little bit of furniture stripper on it. But because we only use all natural products, we, we don't use stripper. So I sanded it just very, very lightly. Now, around the edges, I've got quite pale, but I'm not... I'm not too bothered about that. I can sort that out later on down the road. I just wanted a more rustic look, which I've achieved, so that's good. Then it was thoroughly cleaned inside and out. That took quite a while. And then what happened was Martin had to take the front plates off of these drawers because there's, if you can look in here, there's two. This piece has to be unscrewed from this piece to get the handles off. So that had to happen and then the screws were, were had somebody had obviously tried to do it sometime in the past before and failed and had ruined all the screws so they had to be drilled out. Then Martin had to get new screws and put new screws into it just to get to this stage. So the, the piece is thoroughly cleaned, top's been sanded, inside's been cleaned. Oh and can I just show you this little joy? I'm just about to take those off and get rid of any gunk. We obviously didn't like the cabinet clicking. So they've put a little bit of, they've done their own little home fix. I enjoy. The top part's still over in the workshop. Martin's filming me right now, so he can't be doing that. But I've asked him for an ETA, but I haven't got it yet. I've, I've asked him to make it out of pallet wood because I want the top really quite rustic. He wasn't really happy about that. He wanted nicer wood, but I told him what I wanted. So he seemed confused and said, okay, he would make me it. So that's in the pan. It's going to be done. So I'm just going to get on now with the pink paint that I showed you earlier and start painting this pink. Okay, so you last saw the cupboard and I was about to do two coats of pink, which I have done. It is a beautiful finish. So let's see if we can ruin that. <laughs> um, so I spoke about the wrapping paper that I bought. I bought it from TK Maxx. It cost me £2.99. If you think of that versus a transfer, mm, what are you going to do? So what I'm going to do is I've already done this door over here. So if you might see a little bit of it, but we're going to work on this just so you know exactly what to do. So what I did was for this panel here, I want a piece about this. Now, it is better to rip it. Don't cut it. When you go to blend it in, you'll have a cut edge, which you'll never be able to disguise. So I want it to be... You know, on my panel, but I, I don't want it the size of my panel, if you know what I mean. I want it... You know something like keep all of these parts because these could do for drawer fronts or just another project 
Um, nothing's wasted. Well, I don't waste it anyway. Um, right, so let's have a measure at that and see. So it's a little bit big on this side, but I like the way that's ripped. So let's, let's rip it from this side. See how that fits. Yeah, that's nice, but this part here is a little bit straight, so let's just take a wee bit off there like that. So, what you need next is I'll just cut a bit, I'll just rip a bit for the drawers at the top as well, so that we're um, we can do everything at once. Remind me to show you my floor. <laughs> Earlier on, Martin was measuring up, you know how we're going to be putting chicken wire doors on the front? And he spilt my red paint. So now I have a lovely red staging floor. <laughs> um, so let's hope all my furniture goes with red from now on. So I'm going to rip a piece from up here. So I'm just going to do this. So that's fine, but I do not want this straight edge. You just don't want straight edges. They're just too hard to blend. Um, they show up more. You want somebody to be able to look at your furniture from the side and not see where the join is. I don't want it. I want it, I want it thinner than the... Just take a bit of time to do this you want to do it yeah and i'm going to be happy with that so i have here some lacquer and you are going to do just dry my brush on my jeans you're going to take your lacquer and you're gonna whoop doesn't matter about that apply it onto where you want to put your paper and literally just do that. Then smooth out all of the little wrinkles and saturate. See where the papery parts are, saturate them. They'll be good to kind of blend away. So that's like that, just get rid of that bit. I had such a lovely fine finish on this, I just don't want to end up with lots of drips. So the bottom part is exactly the same so make sure you apply you don't want any parts that haven't stuck down you have so you have to make sure that you do all of it and you can do this on anything now i will say i'm using an all-in-one paint and i'm going to show you how to kind of blend it you can't blend all-in-one paints they won't blend they don't play well together but we're wanting to go for an aged distressed look so i'm going to show you to how to kind of work with them in a better way that fits but these looks work amazingly well with chalk paint because your chalk paint's so thick, it butts up against this edge here and it camouflages it completely. But I want to show you that it actually can be done. So, I think I'm gonna go with that. And I'm just gonna take my lacquer. I just wanna make sure that this top edge had lacquer on it. And I'm just using my brush to seal it down, working from the inside out, making sure there are no there are no air bubbles. Just make sure that all your little parts, because you don't want this bubbling back up. So again, I'm paying really close attention. Now I realise that I'm not actually wearing my glasses, so you could actually be getting anything right now, but. Um, that's like that. Now I'm just going to find my glasses for the next part because it could get a little bit uh, treacherous, I think, if I don't find them. Aha! So I found my glasses. Now, you don't have to wait for the next step. It doesn't matter. Let it all dry together at the same time. The, the only thing that varnish will do is help things move around a little bit more. So I'll just clear the decks and get my paper because I'm going to need some for the top part. So I'll just move that out of the way. So I'm just going to get Martin to quickly pan to this side. This 
is what we're about to do here. So we're going to be mixing some paint colours to get round the edge to give this sort of dirty age look and we're going to be blending in our paper and we're going to be showing this that, you know, that's kind of worn away. It's silky smooth and it's all dry. So we're just going to be doing the same on this one. It just gives you an idea of what we're about to do. So don't be alarmed. Um, first of all, you need to get your pink and you don't need a hugely big brush. You don't need a blending brush, just a small artist brush and take your original color. So whatever your color was originally, now what you're going to do is now it's a self leveling paint. So you're not really going to get a huge amount of texture, but you're just literally kind of on top of your, your varnish or your sealer or your Mod Podge or whatever you're using, whatever you, you trust to stick it down. Um, you're just going to go over that like this and in some areas you're going to be quite bold and you're going to do something like this just to make it look like it's worn away on that part and we'll do another part here and we'll do another part down here and we'll join that up like that to make sure it look, look like it's missing. But I digress, you're going around all these edges. And I'm just doing it quickly. Just so that for the sake of the camera, the blending part takes a little bit longer. Now, that's all you really have to do for the edges kind of blend it in just like that I'm wanting a kind of piece missing here like it's ripped piece up here. now we've done that I'll do the same on this you know it in a minute off camera you don't need to see me do this all the way and I can wear like where the most wear is which is the center is you want to kind of get rid of some of that here like it's worn away like it isn't there because when the handle goes on that's how it'll look it'll look like it's been worn away so that's just you just use your sort of creative license on this it's bubbling a little bit because I'm putting damp paint onto it, but it'll go back down in a minute. Right. There you go, that, that part there done. But I'll go around all these edges in a minute. Back to this. So, don't be alarmed when you see this. It isn't actually a red paint. It's just a dark brown that I've mixed in the bottom of it because Martin spilled all my dark brown paint all over the floor. Didn't you, Martin? So we're going to go up here. Now remember, this is a self-leveling paint. It's an all-in-one. They don't blend, so you're going to have to be kind of a wee bit coy with it. Take it up around here and don't start getting freaked out about this. I'm going to put this along here like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my initial, my original pink, and I'm just going to rub my pink. I'll show you where you can see probably better. So I'm just trying to... I want to keep as much as I can of this dark stuff here. I can go back over and fix this edge in a minute. And I'm just going into my pink and I'm just rubbing it around just to give us a sort of suggestion of a shadow. Like this. With a little bit of distress. Now this is where you take all your time. Um, I'm a wee bit concerned that it's not the same colour of blend as it is on the other door because I've had to mix up a different colour of brown. Um, but we'll have a wee look in a minute. If anything, I think I prefer this, this, this darker shade of brown. It's more plummy when it's gone on. So you have to work it. You have to keep adding your initial pink and taking it out back out to the edge so you can take that off because and you just work away and you start adding some character into it by using your self-leveling paint. I want that taken away that I don't want. So you just take it away where you don't want it again. Now it is a different colour to this side. I'm going to have to stop a moment till I try and get the colour that I had. 
Okay, so I've managed to find the tin that Martin's built, so I've got enough in it to do it because it just doesn't. So some of it had a bit of a plum anyway because I was introducing this uh, Mayflower Lilac on that other side. So I'm okay with the lighter tones that I've managed to put in, but let's try that again with the actual colour that I used before because I don't want these to be not the same. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just, all I'm doing is making this look distressed and it, this take this like I can't really in theory spend all day in camera trying to show you what to do. You, it's it's something that I think that you just think is this enough? Have I done too much? And you play around with your paint and you kind of have a look at what you think is that too much? Maybe you don't want distress. Maybe you liked it all nice and crisp. Um, but I'm just kind of like working with. I'm going to come across along at the end and put dark wax into this as well. So. I'm doing this now what I did was I got a big clean brush on the last one and then I just kind of like slightly dipped it in the pink and what with water in it and just kind of did this just to kind of like almost sort of start again and then I just rubbed in here and I just kind of did this and rubbed it around until I got what I thought I liked but the, but what I did was I, I kind of particularly worked on the corners. I wanted it in the corners, this sort of, the darkness coming from the corners. And you can see, although an all-in-one paint doesn't blend, it does do something and it's just enough. As long as you introduce your colour that you started with into it, then it, it, it does do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot more down this edge because it's got to match this other cupboard door. And again, I'm going to come in with this. I still feel it's slightly off colour, but I'm hoping that it, when it dries, it, it'll, it'll work out. I can always do this on that side just to make sure that they work. And this is all I'm doing. I'm just going round and I'm putting shade in and highlights into where I think I want it to go. I can bring that down here if I want, that's okay, you can do that. If you think it's got too dark again, you can go back in your original and just do this and just wipe it away, that's all you need to do. So I've done my sort of cupboard, my, cu my corners, but what I want to do is down the bottom here, is I want to kind of put some dark down here. I'm just going to work that up till it gets lighter. I want to put a little bit of dark here. Oh, that's my nice red floor now all marked. <laughs> I put a highlight in here. I really think I'm, I should be going a little bit darker here, so sorry for the noise. Up there. Now, I said before, this colour here, this sort of, I didn't do lots of it, I just did sort of a kind of hint here and there, just a tiny little bit. And you can see, I'm not using a big heavy blending brush, I'm just using an artist brush because that way I can introduce small amounts of colour and, and they'll just kind of like hint into it. It's just kind of lifting there and it's kind of lifting here and it's doing the same here. I'm going to take that up into there. Just kind of wipe it along there. Now I haven't done any along here so I'm going to go on and just kind of work my way through this. You can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just adding tone on tone to shade it and darken it and lighten it with an all-in-one paint and it is a very you know everybody says oh you can't do that but you, you can I mean it's it's working it's just you just have to work with it differently so I'm going to go off and do that and make it look like the other door I'll do the drawer and then we'll get to the top so in my palette I have a blue and I have a green and I've mixed them together to get this sort of in between sort of not quite green not quite blue and what I'm trying to recreate is this colour here on these sort of flowers. But I want it a little bit lighter than that. So 
I just want to go across here and just match it with this just to make sure I think I had a little bit more green in it um, just to make sure that I've got it yeah so all I'm going to do now is and I'm not even using a palette knife for this because I want to try and keep some sort of structure is I'm just using the edge of my knife and in some point parts I'm just doing nothing <laughs> so, yeah I'm not using a palette knife this time, but yes Martin's quite correct I am actually using a brush um, and what I'm doing is and I'm doing this just to kind of keep some sort of structure around this sort of the beveled edge here just to bring it out so I, I'm lightly going down in some areas I'm not even touching it and, and I'm running along the bottom so I want to do a bit of a wee bit of interest here down um, I don't want my corners to be the same on both sides so that is all I'm really kind of doing here. What I did was in here was I kind of run, run it down just to, all I'm trying to do now is play with this color and this color and kind of give it um, another sort of dimension. But as you can see, I'm not doing my usual, you know, splash it all over kind of malarkey. I'm just doing a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of fusion there. That's probably enough for that. I didn't go crazy. I did it across here and down there. And I did exactly the same, just with my brush on the side, you can see how I'm holding my brush. When I go to this angle, I'm going this way up and down. And when I want to do a little bit of something, I'm just raising my brush up like that. Straight across, just a hint of a tint. Into my paint again, and the same, oh, and that looks a little bit greener actually. Just wipe it, and along there. Down into here, and I will do something. Now I toyed with really going green down here and having a whole lot of it just on this band but I think I'm going to stand back first um, and put the top on before I decide to do anything crazy like that but that's all I've done. So while we're in this general area because we're avoiding here any with the dark works we're going in and we are applying now because it's an all-in-one paint you can go to town with the dark wax you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to dirty like this was a kind of reasonably good knit cabinet it didn't have any real particular age to it I wanted it to make it look like it's had a little bit of a life um, and I know you can't always do that with what you're trying to do but I want it to look like it's a little bit dirty so something like this I'm trying to go around here um, because when I put my handles on I want some dirty kind of like runny parts here. Same up here where my handles are gonna go here. Pat it in and give it sort of kind of a little bit of a dirty effect here and it might even have ran down here. So let's have kind of separate that out so it doesn't look too contrived. This still has to dry, but this edge will disappear when I put a little part, cause I'll need to put some lacquer over the top of this just to give it another element to butt up against it to make that. But if you go to this one here, which is fully dried and cured, you can't see um, not so much where it is. It's much, you know, this side's still a bit damp, this side's completely dry. So this is what we're aiming for. And again, I'm just gonna put a little bit more sort of dark waxy kind of hair. And I'm kind of guessing with the hand, but the handle ends up going here or something and that'll be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have a big dirty splodge. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just adding a little bit of age just here and there, wherever I want it. I'm not going crazy, just enough to give it, give it a little bit of dimension because anything like this, you can make pop. And I really don't talk about that enough, about making things, you know, really stand out. And that's, this is exactly how you do it. You define it in your highs and lows. And these are your highs and these are your lows, obviously. So you, you I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be condescending. So that's all you're kind of doing. Right, okay, I'm gonna get the top part. The top part is pretty much the same, ripped paper, and then we're gonna blend it in. So I'll do, a, I'll do a couple of shells and I'll show you the last one just so you're not watching this whole repeated again. Hello everyone. So Nell's asked me to show you what I did. She, she wanted me to make these doors for the, for the piece. Um, and much to my protest out of pallet wood, she insisted. So literally all I've done is framed them out, um, used you know these brackets to join the pieces together. This is dead simple. There's nothing rocket science about this. Now I do have a um, you know a nail gun, an air gun, so I could staple in the chicken wire. And I've got flush hinges. 
they're flush, they stay flush so that, and what I've done is I've measured out the width. Now, if you come in over here, there's a, there's a lip here at the bottom that I've got to overcome. So I've made these little spaces and they will live in between there and they're the perfect size that when I hang these properly, the doors will open and close on, on each other. So there you go, chicken wire doors made out of pallet wood. And I forgot to tell you, Lel's about to take them outside and stain them. I brought the doors outside because they'll dry quicker. All I've got here is some water in a coffee jar. And all I'm going to do is get some Annie Sloan's Hornflower chalk paint. And I'm just going to keep on adding till I think it's the brown I'm looking for. Now, once I've got it to the brown I'm looking for, I'm just going to do a tiny little dip in the... Oh, and try and get it in the jar and just kind of darken my black up a little bit, my, my stain up a bit, until I think I've got it. That might be a little bit light. I'll put a little bit more... The only way you can really tell is when you start putting it on and you can adjust it as you go. Um, put a little bit more in for good measure. You can put the lid on this once you've made it and you can use it again multiple times. It's environmental friendly because you're using envi environmentally friendly paints and it's just a good way to stain wood. So just a nice big brush. And all I'm going to do is, now I've got a feeling when this dries, it's going to dry quite light. So I'm just going to do an occasional dip into the paint as well, just to kind of darken it up a bit. So when you're doing something like this, just remember the inside edge here. And get a little bit of dip again. It's quite windy, so it should dry nice and quick. So I'm just doing the top now. And what I've decided to do is kind of keep a straight edge at the top. So when I apply it, it looks like it's all been ripped off at the bottom. Well, that's the plan anyway. So I'm just going to do what I was doing before. Obviously, with my lacquer. And um, I'm trying not to make sure that it doesn't go on the wood. Um, I don't mind. I will put sealer on the wood at the end, but I don't want big drips of, of lacquer on it. So I'm just making sure that I do it all the way along just like before and I'm just going to apply my three strips like they've been ripped um, and I've already ripped them out um, making sure that you get everywhere covered because you don't want to have now applying a great big long piece is different to applying the wee smaller pieces that we put on the front because they're more apt to wrinkle so you're going to have to be quite quick with your getting it on there so plenty of lacquer there probably more than we need because it's dripping everywhere right now. Now, everywhere has had two coats apart from this back panel, which I only gave one because I knew I was going to have to come back in with my paint. So. Any wrinkles that you have Try and get them out from the get-go and I think I'm pretty happy with that and then just go back over the top like we did before so it's just the same as we did before but on a larger scale making sure that you've got it all stuck in now the dresser has had a chip at the front here which I will fix before we um, do any more I will get it finished. So I'm just going to go on and I'm going to apply my other three and I'll do the distress on these two and I'll show you this top one at the end. So my apologies, um, at this part we actually lost the sound. So I'm going to talk you through what I was saying. All I'm saying is I've put the wallpaper on the top like I did the bottom and I've also put the lilac colour in. I've still got that to do on the top half. 
Um, that's all I'm really saying there. So I then go to show you the lovely swanky new handles that we're going to be putting on the piece. They're ceramic with a sort of matching sort of pink colour that matches the dresser. Next you're going to need a wax brush, a dark wax brush and all I did with the after I had I kind of like put the watery stain on, I wanted to wax the doors just to richen them, give them a little bit of a sort of kind of deepen up the colour that was already there. So I'm just um, getting my wax and I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of putting it on in sort of lines almost and then I kind of smoothing it all out. It just gives it a little bit more texture. Now, you can't really see it too clearly here, but um, you'll see it as I do more of the work. You'll see how it ends up looking. So I'm doing this and I'm making sure that all my strokes go towards the green. You know, don't go circle, circle, just go up and down towards the green and kind of do some deeper and lighter shades just to kind of, it just enhances the natural wood and, and that's all really I'm basically telling you at this part. Um, I kind of do that to both doors to make sure that they're both exactly the same. And uh, it's getting to the point um, this is the part where I'm telling you I'm doing some dark distress up the top as well, so don't worry about it. You haven't missed anything. Okay, so what you actually see me here doing now is, because it's got the the brown veneer underneath, I wanted to try and bring some of that out. Um, I haven't gone crazy with distress. I'm just picking out certain areas and just rubbing them back gently that's that's all I'm doing um, it's just to add another sort of layer we've we've put all the dark wax around the edges and now all we're doing is we're kind of like we're kind of adding to its sort of distress look um, it's quite easy with an all-in-one paint um, to just kind of rub it back you do need kind of more of a kind of heavy grit sandpaper to do it um, and just kind of run gently over the top of it and you'll soon find especially with uh, a veneered piece of furniture that it, it it distresses back no problem and the dark wood because it's got the dark top and it's got the dark doors all work so this is all you can see me doing here all I'm doing is just distressing it back Apologies again, uh, there's still no sound in this part, um, it's very frustrating, I don't know how people put voiceovers things, it's much more difficult than you think. So what I'm actually doing here, the blue that's on the bottom part of the dresser that I kind of touched up, the turquoisey blue, all I decided to do because I couldn't quite just leave it as it was, was just using um, a transfer stick or a palette knife or what you have you know, that'll give it that sort of distressed look. And all I'm doing is I'm running it round the edges of the dresser and that's just doing what I normally do. It's making the top and the bottom work together as one and just making sure that um, everything all looks uniform. So that's all I'm doing. That's all I've done in this part. You haven't missed anything. So it's finished. Um, this has turned out really nice and it just shows you what you can do with some wrapping paper i mean that's all this was wrapping paper and some paint and obviously the um palette wood which made the the surround for the doors but that was it really so i've been Lel from made by marley i hope you've really enjoyed today's video and um thank you for everybody who's currently subscribed if you haven't sub subscribed could you please consider subscribing um leave me a comment push the button to be notified when we release a new video uh give us a like a thumbs up and i'll see you another day thank you very much